This video will outline electrical and mechanical test procedures on the fuel injectors used for Yamaha ATV, scooter, snowmobile, and side-by-side -side models, and for Yamaha and Star motorcycles. While some of this information will apply to Yamaha boats and wave runners, the fuel and diagnostic systems are different on these models. The real heart of the electronic fuel injection system is the fuel pump and hoses. These pressurize gasoline from the fuel tank and deliver it to the fuel injector. The fuel injector is basically an electrically operated valve. When it's energized, it opens, allowing the pressurized gasoline to spray into the cylinder as an atomized mist during the intake stroke. Testing a fuel injector basically boils down to making sure the injector is opening and closing, and that fuel is actually spraying into the engine when the injector is open. The self-diagnostic system built into the ECU on all Yamaha and Star fuel injection models make initial electrical testing of the fuel injectors very easy. Make sure all fuel hoses are properly connected and go into the diagnostic mode. Most models just need the LCD panel in the meter assembly. On a few models though, you'll need the FI Diag tool. The appropriate service manual will outline connection and use of the FI Diag tool if needed. Go to Diagnostic Code 36, commonly called D36 which is the actuator function for the fuel injector on single cylinder models or the injector for cylinder number one on multi-cylinder models. On most models, when you cycle the run stop switch from off to run, the ECU will activate the fuel injector five times. Most models use the run stop switch to activate the fuel injector as well as activate several other systems on the unit, but some models use the FI diagnostic tool buttons and FI Rhino models use the differential gear lock switch. Be sure to check the service manual for the model you're working on. The check engine light will also flash five times, indicating the ECU is activating the injector, but you must make sure you hear those five clicks. The check engine light will flash even if the injector does not operate. Repeat this test a couple of times. Make sure you hear five distinct clicks each time. A sticky injector might intermittently skip a click or just click a couple of times during the test. If you hear five good clicks every test cycle, it's safe to assume the fuel injector and the circuit are electrically okay. But unless we're looking down the intake track, we really don't know if gasoline was actually spraying into the engine. We'll talk about a very easy method to determine that without having to remove the injector or air box and maybe a bunch of fairing panels in the next section. There are three basic reasons you wouldn't hear the injector clicking during the diag mode test. One, there's a problem with the wiring for the injector, either the power or ground side. Two, the injector is bad, either stuck due to stale fuel or an electrical failure. And three, a problem with the engine control unit, the ECU. The first step is to make sure the fuel system circuit is working. On all Yamaha and Star FI models that have a key main switch and the 2012 WR450F with the ignition button, the fuel system relay turns on the fuel pump and voltage flows to the fuel injectors for three to four seconds each time the main switch is turned on. This builds up fuel pressure in the system getting ready to start the engine. To determine if the fuel system relay circuit is working, set the engine run switch to run and turn on the main switch and just listen for the fuel pump. If the fuel pump is not operating, then troubleshoot the fuel system circuit, the relay, wires, and fuse, etc. If the fuel pump is running during that four seconds, then the fuel system relay and circuit are working and you can begin to troubleshoot the injectors. Start by connecting to the ground side of the injector, which, by the way, is real easy to do by back probing right at the ECU multi-connector. You won't even need to remove or raise a fuel tank to test here. Just remove the seat on most models. The power side is a parallel connection to all the fuel injectors, but the ground side is a single wire from each injector to the ECU. Refer to the appropriate service manual wiring schematic for the ground wire color code for each injector. Set your voltmeter to DC volts and connect the positive lead to the back probe and the negative lead to the battery negative post. Set the engine run switch to run and turn on the main switch. We should see battery voltage for about four seconds, then drop back to zero volts. You can turn the main switch off and back on to get four more seconds. If you don't see battery voltage, then the power side of the injector has some type of failure or the injector is bad. Back probe to the ground side for all injectors if it's a multi-cylinder model. If there's no voltage to any of them, then the problem is most likely an open in the wire between the fuel system relay and the injectors. 
If you have no voltage to just one injector ground wire, then you'll need to gain access to that injector directly to troubleshoot further. Back probe to the power side of the injector. No voltage would indicate a wire problem to just that injector. But if the voltage is okay on the power side, but no voltage reading on the ground side, then that injector has failed with an open circuit internally. Verify that with a continuity test. You can also apply 12 volts directly to a fuel injector for testing. Apply voltage for just a second or less though to prevent overheating. Polarity is not critical, just be sure not to short your test leads together. You should hear the injector click when you apply 12 volts if the injector is good. A standard voltmeter is okay for testing a unit that won't start due to a possible voltage supply problem to the fuel injector. But if the unit will run, or you're troubleshooting a running performance problem, then the ignition mate is the best tool to use. The ignition mate, or a true peak reading voltmeter or adapter, allows us to accurately test fuel injector voltage during operation. A standard voltmeter will just show consistent battery voltage, or even a little less at the injector during running. This is because the injector is open and closing so fast, and a standard voltmeter isn't designed as a peak reading voltmeter, so it just can't determine and display the voltage reading fast enough. For example, this 2008R6 will show 90 to 100 peak volts on the ignition mate at idle. On most FI models though, you'll see about 40 to 50 peak volts. I'll explain why the difference in just a minute. Now you might be surprised to see 90 volts out of that little injector. How the heck is that possible? The injector contains a coil of wire wrapped around an iron core. When voltage flows through the coil, it creates a magnetic field that pulls the plunger inside the injector up, allowing gas to spray into the engine. When the ECU opens the circuit, this magnetic field collapses and a spring closes the plunger. This rapid collapse of the magnetic field induces high voltage back in the coil. This is self-induction, the same principle as the primary circuit of an ignition coil. You want to test all cylinders. If you get the same peak voltage from all of them, we can safely determine that all injectors are operating correctly. But let's say you get 90 volts out of three R6 injectors and only 40 volts out of one. Again, three possibilities. Either that injector is bad, there's a problem with the wiring, voltage to the injector or ground circuit for the injector, or the ECU has failed. A low reading could be the result of a poor connection or excessive resistance in the injector coil, causing a weak magnetic field. This weak field would not induce as high a voltage as the other injectors when it closes. To eliminate a wiring problem, test the input voltage and the ground side wires and connectors with the usual electrical troubleshooting tests. Now it is possible for an injector to pass all these tests, resistance, peak voltage, everything, and still not be opening and closing, not making that clicking sound. This would most likely be caused by the injector clogged with fuel residue or some other contamination, not allowing the plunger to move freely. Lastly, an injector not activating during the diag mode test, or low peak voltage, could be caused by an ECU failure. Now, ECU failures are extremely rare, but possible. Just be sure to be very thorough in your other tests, absolutely eliminating all other possibilities before declaring the ECU bad, such as switching injectors between good and bad cylinders for testing, and triple checking your voltage and resistance readings at all connectors and junctions in the circuit right up to the ECU. So why do we see a spike of 90 plus voltage from some injectors and 40 volts from others? It's due to the programming of the self-diagnostic system on each model. Some models have a fault code for a faulty fuel injector, but most models do not. On models that do not have a fault code for injectors, the voltage spike from the injector is suppressed inside the ECU, so the spike doesn't damage the ECU or other sensitive electronic circuits. On 2006 and later R6, and some other models, there is a fault code for a faulty fuel injector. The circuitry inside the ECU on these models is shielded from this voltage spike, and the self-diagnostic system is programmed to look for that 90 peak volt spike to determine if the injector is working or not. If the spike falls below a certain value, the self-diagnostic system will display fault code 39, which indicates a faulty injector or wiring. Models with secondary injectors will have fault code 39 for the primary injectors and fault code 40 for the secondary injectors. So all you need to do is look at the service manual for the model you're working on. If it has fault code 39 or 40, you should see at least 90 to 100 peak volts at idle with an ignition mate. If the unit does not have fault code 39 or 40, then you should see 40 to 50 peak volts from the fuel injectors. 
Now let's talk about that easy method to determine if gasoline was actually spraying into the engine when the injector is activated. First, follow the steps in the appropriate service manual to connect a fuel pressure gauge and for the proper fuel pressure specification. Correct fuel pressure is critical for proper engine operation on all fuel injected vehicles of any brand, cars, motorcycles, whatever. All Yamaha and Star FI models are designed to operate at one specific fuel pressure at all engine speeds and loads. The fuel pressure is set by the fuel pump and pressure regulator and should not change under any condition. The air fuel ratio, basically the amount of gasoline sprayed into the engine, is controlled by the length of time the fuel injector is open. The longer the injector is open, the richer the air fuel ratio. And also keep in mind there's no sensor to monitor fuel pressure, so it's up to technicians to verify if fuel pressure is correct or not when troubleshooting a running performance complaint. If fuel pressure was low, for example, less fuel would be sprayed into the engine, so it would run lean, and the engine might stumble or hesitate during acceleration, but there would be no fault code triggered. Please don't forget this basic step when working on FI models. You could waste a lot of time needlessly testing dozens of FI sensors and circuits. If the fuel pressure is correct, we can now easily determine if gas is actually spraying into the cylinder when the fuel injectors are energized by using the fuel pressure drop test. Make sure all fuel hoses are properly connected and go into the diagnostic mode and go to Diag Code 36. Remember, this is the actuator function for the fuel injector or the injector for cylinder number one on multi-cylinder models. The fuel pump will operate in Diag mode if the engine run switch is set to run and maintain the proper fuel pressure in the system. Now disconnect the fuel pump electrical lead. The fuel pressure should remain steady for at least a few minutes. If the pressure immediately starts to drop, then the check valve in the fuel pump is bad or one of the fuel injectors is not closed, possibly sticking partially open due to fuel residue or some other contamination. If the fuel pressure does not remain steady, you cannot do the fuel pressure drop test. You'll need to find the cause of the fuel pressure leak and repair that first. If the fuel pressure does remain steady when we disconnect the fuel pump electrical lead, we can continue. Remember, when you're in Diag Mode 36 and cycle the run switch from off to run, the ECU will activate the fuel injector five times. These five activations are very short in total duration, so not much fuel is sprayed into the engine. To better see if a fuel injector is flowing the proper amount of gas during operation, cycle the run stop switch a total of five to six times. This will activate the injector a total of 25 to 30 times. We should now see a noticeable decrease on the fuel pressure gauge, indicating that gas is indeed spraying into the engine. A good rule of thumb is one to two PSI of fuel pressure drop for every 25 to 30 activations of each fuel injector. On multi-cylinder machines, reconnect the fuel pump electrical lead to build the fuel pressure back up to the standard spec, then disconnect the electrical lead, set the diag mode for the next cylinder, D37 for cylinder number two, for example, and repeat the test. All cylinders should drop the same pressure. If one cylinder does not drop as much as the other cylinders, or the pressure does not drop at all, then that injector is clogged and not spraying fuel into the engine during operation, even though it's being activated properly by the electrical circuit. It could be the inlet filter is clogged, not allowing gas into the injector, or the outlet nozzle or holes are clogged, not allowing gas to spray into the engine. If the pressure drops more in one cylinder than the others, then that injector might be sticky due to fuel residue or some other contamination and not closing or closing as fast as the other injectors, allowing the pressure to drop more in that cylinder than in the other cylinders. This cylinder will be getting more gasoline than it's supposed to during operation and running rich. Now we are going to be spraying more fuel into the engine than is normal for the fuel injector diag test. So please do not cycle the run stop switch more than six times unless you start the engine or at least spin it over several times between tests to clear out the excess gasoline. So that's it. Thorough electrical and mechanical testing of the fuel injectors. And in most cases, all we needed to do was remove the seat to get access to the ECU and maybe remove a side cover or pivot the gas tank on sport bikes to access the fuel pump and fuel hose. For a full overview of the Yamaha fuel injection system and onboard self-diagnostic functions, please complete the Yamaha fuel injection system's self-paced training module through Yamaha Motor University. Thanks for watching.